For the past 60 years, cholesterol has been demonized. We've been telling people to avoid saturated fats and that dietary cholesterol is bad. And serum cholesterol is also bad. It is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease, people will say. But there's various studies finding that high cholesterol, especially as you get older, is actually protective and is inversely correlated with mortality from cancer, as well as wait for it, cardiovascular disease. I just want to share with you some of these studies because we don't hear about these studies. When we go to our primary health professional, we get our blood work done, we're losing visceral fat, we're improving our energy, our brain function by cutting out carbohydrates and processed foods. But sometimes as a natural response to minimizing carbohydrate consumption in the diet, our blood cholesterol can in increase and that scares your doctor. You're often foisted uh, different lipid lowering medications and so forth. But I want you to be aware of several studies finding what's known as the cholesterol paradox. And essentially what this paradox is, is that there's this correlation with higher blood cholesterol and better protection against both death from cancer and cardiovascular disease, particularly as people get older, which is quite, as I mentioned, a little bit paradoxical. This article here, I think is important to have at your fingertips to download. It was just published uh, several days ago, titled Cholesterol Paradox in the Community Living Adults is Higher Better. And they actually found that higher total cholesterol, as well as higher HDL cholesterol, the high density lipoprotein, is associated with greater longevity and mortality and a reduction in death from cardiovascular disease. 4,499 participants that were tracked over eight years. This was part of the Beijing Elderly Comprehensive Health Cohort Study. Again, finding higher blood cholesterol linked with less mortality from cardiovascular disease. So that's important. And they talk extensively about the cholesterol paradox and question why clinical guidelines recommend that we lower cholesterol levels. Again, I think if we look at the epidemiology of cardiovascular disease and the association with high LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol, it's really more of a risk factor for middle-aged men. Uh, there's not a strong correlation with high cholesterol uh, as you get older in both men and women, older by meaning over the age of 60, as well as women of all ages. There's not really much of a correlation based upon epidemiological studies with high cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. Uh, but we also know that there are shifts in cholesterol with cancer metabolism. We're gonna talk about that shortly. However, I just wanna share with you this study that was published in 2011, so this is an older one, titled Low Cholesterol is Associated with Mortality from Stroke, Heart Disease, and Cancer. Now, what was unique about this particular study is uh, individuals in Japan were tracked, 12,000 subjects were tracked for, uh, I, I believe, about 10 years, and they found a higher odds ratio of death from both uh, heart disease, stroke, and cancer in individuals who had low cholesterol levels. So what do we make of this literature and this confusing sort of paradox when it comes to cholesterol? Most mainstream doctors are trying to lower it, but we have ample evidence finding that low cholesterol is not necessarily protective, especially as you get older. It's important just to qualify. I'm not instructing you to go out and intentionally increase your cholesterol necessarily. Uh, I think you should eat a diet that optimizes metabolic health, that helps you lose visceral fat, belly fat, uh, facial fat, and helps you feel better. And as a side effect of that diet, for example, if your LDL cholesterol increases or your total cholesterol increases, I don't think it's much to worry about because I think the visceral fat and the metabolic health are more important. Lowering triglycerides, increasing HDL. If you have cholesterol elevations, it's probably not that big of a deal because most people don't really realize that when we're doing standard cholesterol measurements, we're looking at both the, we're looking at the cholesterol content inside the particles, which don't really matter. It's the particles themselves that interact with the vessel wall and throughout the body. And the milieu that your body or those cholesterol particles are floating around in, the inflammatory milieu, uh, the propensity for them to become oxidized, if you're eating a lot of highly oxidizable omega-6 seed oils, for example, can render them more atherogenic or, or more problematic. So I think if we continue to focus on this obsessively reductionistic mindset when it comes to lipoproteins and, and LDL particles and cholesterol particles, we're missing the bigger picture. And so I think we can't have enough information to help to steer the conversation away of myopically focusing on cholesterol content and ignoring the milieu that cholesterol is being bathed in. And we often see this in weight loss where people start to lose weight and so the composition, particularly of their LDL particles, shifts from having very high levels of triglycerides in the LDL particles uh, and lowering the triglyceride content of the particles because 
of the fact that they're more insulin sensitive. And so therefore their LDL cholesterol will often increase when they start to lose some, some body weight. I saw this back at, starting in 2007. Uh, some of you may know I, I sold advanced lipoprotein particle testing for a company called Spectracell and worked with a lot of medical doctors in the Colorado area, as well as Utah and Las Vegas and Reno, Nevada. And this was a common uh, sort of paradoxical finding for these doctors is they said, well, these patients are losing weight, their triglycerides are going down, but their LDL is going up. Like, what is going on? And it turns out that the composition of the particles shift around. So if you can just envision a tennis ball, uh, and that would represent the analogy here, is your LDL, low-density lipoprotein particle, Within that tennis ball, you have both cholesterol as well as triglycerides and other uh, fatty uh, acid moieties, vitamin K, for example, and other uh, fat soluble things that are insoluble in your water-based blood. And so as you become more metabolically healthy, the composition of these particles shifts, and that might create the illusion that your cardiovascular risk is increasing. But what we see again in insulin resistant subjects is the composition of their particles are enriched in triglycerides because there's a lot of de novo lipogenesis occurring due to the phenomenon of insulin resistance. And so as you become more insulin sensitive, the composition of these particles shift, but that doesn't necessarily increase the atherogenicity or the cardiovascular disease propensity of these particles. I know these are a lot of big words, but it's important to understand that the standard tests that are being used now are just looking at the total cholesterol content in the particles, not looking at the particles themselves. And so that's why over at our website, highintensityhealth.com, we have the blood work cheat sheet. I recommend testing your ApoB to A1 ratio. This is a $19 test. Last time I checked, very simple to do. You can also do advanced particle testing if you so like. But basically, you want your HDL and triglycerides to roughly be one-to-one. -one. So you want your triglycerides, you know, I like to see in most people around 60, 70. Uh, if their HDL could be around 50 to 60, that would be great. The closer that ratio is one-to-one, -one, that is HDL to triglycerides, that is associated with greater metabolic health. And so in that context, we don't really get overly concerned about the LDL particle uh, and concentrations uh, itself. Why is that? Well, there's ample evidence to suggest that low cholesterol is actually a risk factor for poor prognosis of cancer. This was actually uh, published right here, this study in Science. This was a review article talking about that, titled Cholesterol and Cancer in the Balance. And this was published in 2014. So it's been known for at least 20, 25 years that there's an association with low cholesterol and cancer. In fact, one of my early mentors, Harry Eidenier, back in 2006, would tell me one of the most prominent ominous markers of cancer or neoplasm uh, is a sudden drop in total cholesterol. You often see a sudden drop in total cholesterol as well as a sudden drop in albumin when someone has metastatic cancer. And so I've seen this in, recently actually in relatives um, that were recently diagnosed with cancer. And when I was looking at their labs, uh, thankfully uh, I had family that were able to send me the labs just for curiosity's sake, like, well, hey, let's look at their labs. Uh, total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol in these subjects, unfortunately, was quite low. Now, it doesn't mean that the low cholesterol caused the cancer, but there is an association uh, with cholesterol and cancer. And so I think the take home message from this video is the links between metabolic health and cancer and metabolic health and cardiovascular disease have been grossly oversimplified by mainstream medicine. And so just uh, having these arbitrary cut points of where LDL cholesterol should be uh, and uh, myopically focusing on lowering that with uh, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, which are statin-lowering medications, this is much more complex than that. And so we need to think about, uh, as I mentioned, the, mil the milieu, the ratios of HDL to triglycerides, uh, your VLDL or your remnant lipoproteins. So there is an association with greater longevity. And as we talked about the Amoris cohort study, this is the uh, April lipoprotein mortality risk cohort. This was a, an ongoing study in Europe uh, recently where they tracked people for 25 years uh, over the age of 65, finding that higher total cholesterol was associated with a greater probability of reaching 100 years of age and having exceptional longevity. Uh, and so again, as they talked about in that paper, this goes against the contemporary consensus when it comes to um, lipid lowering cut points and thresholds. So there's a lot more to the story. So I just like to arm you with information. I can't tell you what to do. Uh, I just want you to be able to have some of these articles at your fingertips, which I will put in the show notes, so that when you get your annual physical uh, and you go to your doctor and they freak out, 
even though your health is going the right, in the right direction, you have less uh, visceral adiposity, your liver enzymes are low, your triglycerides have lowered, your blood pressure is in r- good range, uh, you have no longer have erectile dysfunction and, and all of that, uh, but your doctor is freaked out about your cholesterol, you can say, hey, look, here's what the evidence says, uh, and you can make an informed decision based upon your health and your goals and what you're trying to optimize uh, for. But uh, I think we've oversimplified cholesterol. It's much more complex. Uh, the pathway has some 25 different steps and makes all these different sterile compounds and cholesterol compounds. So to think that we're just going to block the pathway with a drug uh, that initiates the first step in the biosynthesis of cholesterol, again, the statins, hamstring, the hmd coa reductase enzyme, there's all these isoprenoids that are very helpful for brain health, cognition, and all that. And so I think we need to uh, think a little bit more holistically and look at the entire picture. So That's what we're here to do, my friends. If you enjoyed this content, please let me know by hitting that like button, sharing this video with a friend. If you want more content on this, let me know in the comments and be sure to download our blood work cheat sheet over at highintensityhealth.com that includes uh, the apolipoprotein B assessments, fibrinogen, uh, and some of the ratios that we talked about. That is totally free, but you do opt into our email list so you can get get updated when we launch uh, new videos and courses and things like that. So uh, hopefully you find these articles helpful and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.